Hey, how are you? This is Ian Harris here, and Steve with me as well. He's been a good little man tonight. Uh, this video is about answering a lot of subscribers' questions that I get asked a lot, so I might as well do a video and answer a lot of your questions that I can get through to you. Okay, Steve will come back later. One of the questions were also, we need to see more of Steve. Well, here he is, isn't he lovely? Okay, Corey B, a subscriber of mine, asking, um, what's my favorite brush? I don't really have a favorite brush, but you can adapt to different brushes and find them easier to use and something new. But the main brush that I use is just from the hardware store. It's a two inch brush and it's synthetic. And I use this for either priming up the canvas or blending. And I have a smaller one and a half inch as well. Okay. And this one is very old, it's became feathered and twisted at the ends and brushes like that you can find come in handy for shrubs and whatnot. So that one doesn't get used as much as it used to and also a good fan brush a <coughs> get some soft ones but my favourite fan brush is this hog bristle. Its bristles are very strong and not thick, but they've got, they've got strength in them. So if you want to flick, or you really want to get stuff onto your canvas, you can have more control with this. That's how I feel with that brush. So I don't have a f favorite brush, but I have ones that I use more often than others. Um, Karen Thomas, a subscriber of mine, wants to know if my Facebook is open to the public or just friends of friends who can join. I have my Facebook on public, so a lot of the art people that meet me through other people can add me, they can look at what I get up to, and they're more than welcome to comment on my stuff, whether it's good or bad. So a lot of subscribers message me in the YouTube channel. I do look at every comment I get when I get the time. Sometimes I might look at it the next day, but days could go by and I finally get to have a look at them. And I would always click like. And if your comment's got a like from me, it means that I've sat down and read your comment. I don't just brush you off. I try and um, answer much questions as I can. Sometimes if you've asked a bit of a stupid question, you might not get an answer. Like, it's obvious what size canvas I'm using. And if it's that important, sometimes I say what the sizes are, but if you ask a question where I know the answer's in the video, I'm not going to waste my time answering it because you haven't taken the time to watch all my video, have you? But that doesn't matter. Laurie Cass has been asking, how long have I been painting for? I've started painting in 2012 with acrylics. I saw a guy on TV here in Australia, and after watching him a few times, I just thought, you know what, I'd like to get into that. And I put 101% into doing it and I'm enjoying it. And a lot of people tell me that I inspire them. Maybe I do, but becoming the painter that I've become, I also am inspired by you as well. And I have a different approach of teaching because when I was in my early days of wanting to paint and I couldn't grasp either blending or clouds, something like that. I'd go on YouTube and I looked up some artists there and I've picked up a lot. Oh, that's what you do. This is what you should do first. This is how you should do it. And also common sense prevails. How to mix things and stuff like that. I am an artistic person in general. Like I've always been doing lead pencil drawings all my life since I can remember. So I do have a grasp on how a shape should sort of be shaded or something like that. So that does help, I suppose. And um, so my teaching method is, what did I miss out on when I was learning from other YouTubers? So my approach is mainly for beginners. This is how you can paint a cloud, water, a tree, a portrait, something different, abstract, whatever. So I put in my videos what I feel I missed out on when I was learning, like 
hang on, a lot of that fast forwarded. How did he bloody do it? So I'd like to show you. I'd wrap, ram that camera closer to the camera and say, okay, this is how you do it or how I would do it and you can learn from me. Whatever. Steve's playing with my pen. Um, and a lot of people have commented, um, don't change the way you teach. Well, I can't change the way I teach. That's just the way I am. I can't change it. I'm, I don't want to change it. I won't change it. It'll just be that way because that's the way I am. Sometimes at the beginning of a video when I'm setting up, I do have a thing in mind where I'd like to, I'll go this sort of direction. But whilst we're filming and we're taking breaks and doing this and that, I realise that's gone out the window. I've just gone my own directional way. Can't be helped. Mindy Horstman has asked, she's a subscriber of mine, why do I wear gloves? Well, because they come in a box and they're plentiful. They're latex gloves. This just so happens to be the colour of them. If they were yellow, pink or red, I wouldn't have cared. That's just, they happen to be purple. Um, I use my hands a lot. And it's so easy to take the gloves off at the end and not have paint all over me. Sometimes I get paint everywhere. And also, paint is absorbent. It can get into your skin. When I was with Len Hen, he told me a few little things that I didn't know about life. And the paint does can get into your bloodstream. If I'm going to spend the next 30 years painting, I want to try and protect my skin as much as possible. Because if I'm just willy-nilly and it's getting into my bloodstream, I'm just creating another hazard to knock myself off the perch. So the main reason I wear gloves is to keep my hands free of the paint. And it's just another prop. Because I'm filming, it's good, in my opinion, to have props. Like when I first started filming, I never had a bloody easel. I didn't have, you know, I didn't have a, a palette. I didn't have a lot of things. So over time, I've filmed, filmed, I've picked up, I've got a microphone, I'm getting better lighting, I've created a studio in my dining room. Luckily for me, I don't have a wife, the house is mine, I live here on my own with my son out the back and my cat Steve, so I don't have a crazy silly wife telling me, keep the paint off the floor. I'm happy the way it is. Anyway. Okay, Jen Hemisley has asked, do you have to use retarder in acrylic painting or can you paint without it? Well, we only use retarder in acrylic painting. You don't need it in oils. Oils have other products that do those sort of things. Now, if you want to paint my style, I suggest you find a retarder medium to mix in with your paint and it keeps it wet. When you're putting it all over your canvas, it's allowing you to blend like an oil painting. There is a great artist out there from Australia. He does a lot of very close to realism art. Mark Waller, look him up. He's an excellent artist. I've noticed he doesn't use retarder. He does big canvases. He, he uses a bit of water, but he can spread it on. And he's obviously a wonderful painter. He knows what he's doing. He knows the science behind it. And common sense prevails with him as well. He just gets it on there. But if you, being a beginner, you're not painting so quick. You don't have to paint as quick as me either. You can take your time, you can sit down, you can work it out what you're gonna paint, work out what you need, study your painting, I've said often before, and you can paint as slow as you want. You don't need to rush, okay? So you don't need retarder if you're not looking for, say, my finishes. I get my finishes because I use retarder and I'm used to it, and I quite like it, actually. That's why I use retarder. So if you don't use it, it just makes the blending a bit more difficult than the way I do it. Other than that, either you like it or you don't, okay? Uh, a common question I get asked, this one's from Rebecca McDonald, do I use gesso on my canvases before I paint them white. I don't. I've grabbed my canvas out of the packet, I put it on the easel, I'll spray it with a bit of misty water if I feel it needs some moisture on there, and I'm just getting the paint, the white paint, it's a flowable paint, it's a soft runnier paint than the structured paint. I paint that onto my canvas with retarder if I know I'm going to blend skies and clouds and water. 
So no, I do not use gesso before I paint it white. Uh, Lucy McKee or McKay asks, do I fear that I'm using too much retarder? Um, on the back of the bottle, it tells you maybe add 10% volume of this to the paint you're using. So if you've got this much paint, 10% of that volume should be this. But I don't really go by that. I don't want to wreck my head and get all worried. I'll just put the paint onto the cam, onto the palette. I'll squirt a bit in there, like I'm a cook, doing a bit of cooking and adding spices. Ah, she'll be right. That's all. You don't have to worry too much about it. If you're a good tree and you know what you're doing, your fruit will be wonderful. You're the tree and your fruit is your paintings, okay? Don't get too head stuffed about it. So I just put a bit in there. I think that's runny enough or wet enough, and I'll blend with it. If someone, I, I can't remember who it was, they said the top of my clouds are getting scratchy and brush strokes in it. That is because you've put too much in there. So if you want to get behind the science of it, set yourself up some practicing methods. So when you're doing a painting, you can tell, I know not to do it that way, I'll do it that way. Steve, where are you? A lot of subscribers comment and tell me that they're doing a lot of the paintings that I do. I'd love to see them. I'd hardly see, I see a few of my Facebook friends they'll add and share some of the paintings they've done of mine, like the tiger, the moon, so on and so on. But a lot of my YouTube subscribers out there, they've told me that they've done my paintings, they're gonna do them. Add me on Facebook under Ian Harris. Look for my profile picture with the blue sunnies on. And add me, if I see you're an artist, I'll accept your friend request. And you are more than welcome to share your stuff on my wall. I share my stuff around on um, Fun With Acrylics. It's is another art group on Facebook. There's a lot. I like to see your work. And like I said before, some beginners are afraid. My work isn't as good as yours. No one's as better than anybody else's. Everyone's work is different, I say. I ain't better than you. You ain't better than me. We are just two different artists that paint different work. That's all there is to it. I mean, you look at all the art out there. Nine people, 99.9% .9 of the people say it's great, it's wonderful, great job, great job. That's it. That's all it takes. It's different from what they do. I hope my speech is understandable for a lot of Americans. I've got a graph where all my YouTuber subs are from and 90% of them are in America, Canada. And some people have trouble understanding my speech. I cannot change it. That's just the way my Aussie accent is. Sometimes I might speak fast, but pause, rewind, play, listen again. It's a video, you can do that, eh? It's not that hard, I'm telling you right now, eh? A lot of my videos on this channel are dedicated for beginners. I also, you might see, you don't have to do it this way, but I just want to add this little bit in. That's for the other painters that are not beginners, more advanced painters that still like some tips and ideas, so they'll go and watch it. I still go on YouTube now and watch other artists, and I just sit there, and you don't realise it, but... You know, people go to university, sit in a big lecture room, listen to a bloody lecturer there, yeah, write down notes and that, rah, rah, rah. They're going to university, learn whatever degree they're going to learn. But you can go in your office or your spare room, go on YouTube and just watch half a dozen or a ton of videos. And little do you know, you've just educated yourself and you've done a bit more informative work to what you know about art. I still do it to this day. You're never too old to learn new tricks, you know that? Never. So just remember, when, you, when you're painting, just take your time, because when you paint, you create your own magic, okay? You don't have to go as fast as a lot of us people on YouTube teaching other people how fast we go. Plus, we've edited it together and it makes it look quicker. And take your time, have a rest if you feel you need a rest. Sometimes I'll do a YouTube painting and before I seal it, I'll let it sit for a couple of days and I've changed it because I just wasn't happy with it. But on the video, you're dedicated to some time, you have gotta get it done, okay? Don't stress yourself and try and 
record everything you do because it can really muck your head up if you um, don't have enough knowledge of what you want to get out there to people. I wouldn't try and teach people how to paint a cloud if I didn't know how to paint a cloud. I know the difference between that's a good cloud and that's rubbish. If I paint rubbish and someone says, well, that's great, Ian, I'm smart enough to know, well, I'm not going to go out there and teach people how to paint that. I've got some milk up here. I need another drink. I'll tell you what, in Australia, what is it, February, no, March, early March, it's our hot time, January, February, March. March, January, February, March. Maybe the Americans will understand that, eh? Oh, well, us Australians, we always say the word A a lot at the end of the sentence. Well, I know I do anyway. You know, it's not bad, eh? Or it could slur into one long word or a sentence, you're not understanding it. Like I could say, uh, what do you think? Well, in Australia, we say, what do you reckon? But putting the real Aussie slang into it, I might say, what do you reckon, eh? That is virtually saying, what do you think? So we'll do it this way, all right? What do you reckon, eh? That's how it's done. Pam Bethel, she wants to know what is retarder. Retarder is a medium. A medium is a product you add into an acrylic paint. And a medium can be a retarder. It can be an impasto. An impasto is something that'll thicken up a, a more runnier paint. A retarder retards the drying time. It slows down the drying time of the paint. Now, I'm not sure of this, I'm not sure of this subscriber's name. It's just Lotte A, L-O-T-T-E A, Lotte A. She wants to know what kind of paints I use. I use a variety of paints. Now, a lot of you beginners out there, once you start cracking off some pieces where you think are worthy for selling, you might, it pays to buy the cheap stuff first, but there's a cheap, that's a student quality paint. That's what you can learn in. And when you know you can start pulling off paintings that are worth selling, change it to an artist quality. Now I use global, but to me global isn't as great as Atelier. I use Atelier for my good stuff. That comes in all different, um, they got every color there. Every color, ones you don't even have to mix. And another one I use is Matisse. Now Matisse comes in a structured paint, which is very thick, and it also comes in a flow paint, which is a lot more, it flows more. So those two there. And the Matisse also comes in 500 mil tubs, and these smaller tubs here, the Matisse. Also Atelier, they do have, yes they do, here we go. Atelier come in tubs as well. Tubs is great. You can get it out, knife it onto your palette, and if you've got a bulk heap left over, you could just put it back in there. And if you find with these tubs, the colours you're not using a lot of, what I do, you give it a bit of condensation in there on the paint and on the lid. And if you know you're not using that colour often, you put the lid on, it's got condensation in there, it's not going to get a skin on it. That helps prolong the life of it as well. So yeah, they're the paints I use. And why I say change from a student quality to artist, you need to use a good quality paint and a good quality canvas if you're going to start selling your work. It's not fair on the buyer if you've used real cheap quality paints, student quality or art, you know, school quality paints. and same with the canvases. You need to use a good quality if you're going to start selling your work. A lot of people ask, can they have my permission to do some of the paintings I do in video? You, of course you can. Just You don't need my permission. Go ahead and paint it. That's what this is all about. You can paint it and you put your signature on it. That's all you do. And you can sell it if you want. Because you, you've painted it and you've autographed it. The only thing is a no-no is to get somebody's work and paint it and put their signature on it and sell it as their work. That's a no-no, okay? Other than that, do what you want with it. I go on, I look for anything that gives me inspiration or on Google, 
I'm down and out and I've got no idea what I'm going to paint. I'll, 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 I could spend a whole day looking for ideas and I'll save pictures. And I'm using those pictures as a reference. I don't copy them to an exact, I just reference from them. Okay, I'm going to have this, this and this from the picture. That's how it comes. The worst thing you can do, what I've said before when you're copying, is trying to copy every exact detail that becomes, how would you say, it looks like that, but you've tried to make it look like that, but you've just sort of got it a bit crookedish, and it just doesn't look right. So you might paint your trees totally different looking to what's in the reference picture. But if the reference picture has a tree, a path, and a moon, you know how to paint a tree, a path, and a moon. You paint the tree and the path and the moon your way, but you've used that reference picture to lay it out that way. That's, that's how it works. That's the best way not to get too confused and stuffed around with, oh, something's not going right. Look at the picture and go, there's a tree. Paint your tree. You don't even need to keep looking. Paint your tree. When I'm videoing, you might notice my eyes moving. I'm looking at a reference picture because... The worst thing you can do is not knowing what you're going to paint. And when you don't know what you're going to paint, the first paint stroke is the hardest. But the last brush stroke is never the last. Okay, I've just got Steve again. He was sleeping under the table. I didn't know where he was. Yeah. Steve got Steve, he was too young, he was six weeks old when I got him. Normally a cat has to be eight weeks old when they leave their mother, but poor Steve's mother was run over by a car and my son got Steve from a, whoever was selling him, they said that his mother was run over. So he was off the titty too young, weren't you? But um, he has a habit, some cats do it, some do, some don't, he'll just, want to suck my finger like it's a little bottle or a teat. And poor little thing, he misses his mother. Don't you, eh? Eh, you miss your mummy? Anyway, I hope this video has been informative for you. Me and Steve are gonna go. Say goodbye, Steve. Yeah, we'll get going. So um, leave your comments below if you have any more questions. And like and share my videos and subscribe to my channel. And remember, look me up on Facebook and add me as a friend, and you're more than welcome to share your stuff on my wall. All the best for everybody out there, eh? Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.